makers of Chase and Sanborn coffee, the superb blend you know is fresh, present the Chase and Sanborn Hour. And your host, Nelson Eddy. With quarterback Don Amici still on vacation, this is Nelson Eddy calling the signals for another Chase and Sanborn Hour. Coming out of the huddle with all plays ready are Dorothy L'Amour, Robert Armbruster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, and of course, Edgar Bergen and cheerleader Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> rah, 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 this boom, rah. Now, Just a minute, Charlie, just, just a minute. Before you start your cheer, let me welcome yeah. two new guests to our active players list. Yeah. Clark okay. Gable and Vera Vega. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. Now, we hope that all of you will be rooting for the yeah. home team tonight and yeah. that you will join the ever-increasing cheering squad for our alma mater, Chase and Sanborn. Okay, Charlie, hip, hip. Let it go. Chase and Sanborn, rah, rah, rah. Chase and Sanborn, this boomba. Are we in it? Wee, wee, wee. C O F F E E E. Data, data. Team, team, team. <laughs> yeah. That's the spirit, Charlie. And with band leader Arm Brewster ready to start the kickoff, I'll take over the singing section with a touchdown song from Apple Blossoms. Little girls, goodbye. <laughs> Where is the man who was glad to bow to the plan That he give up all of his life to his wife from his wedding day? Why should he try when he can't forget with a sigh All his old loves ask any man for the truth and he will say I love the girls, girls, girls just the same And being wet cannot kill the flame There is the same old charm With a maid half afraid And when she looks at me with a smile I know it's girls make life worthwhile Now I must leave you, forget you, but love you A husband I So little girls, goodbye I must part from the girls who deep in my heart I have sworn to love all my life But my wife never would agree Many a man has declared he knows that he can Give his past up, that's very well for the rest But not for me And when she looks at me with a smile I know it's girls make life worth a while Now I must leave you, forget you, but love you So dear as girls Goodbye The serious sages tell us that one should never mix business with pleasure. But the robust, romantic Canadian logger ignores this advice completely. Happily, he goes about his serious business, skipping over logs and preventing jams. And in between skips, he manages to sing his song and flirt with the pretty girls who watch him admiringly from the shore. The good nature of these hard-working fellows is excellently expressed by the Canadian logging song. Down the rivage we float, we float the logs, they make it a grand boat. On the logs we leap and laugh a safe upon the logs that's on the rock. There's a rock, watch out, mon frere, you maybe get a big sheep right there. The sun is shining on the shore, we see big salmon jump some more, some more. 
Down the rapids we hear them roar Now my flag it on the shore Hold on. See the logs they make stampede Like her the cows are on to lead With logging pole we have to leap To coax them out from log jam deep a log jam is so hard to coax as a crowd of tricky women folks. The river bends, we get a view of Petite de Ville, they be a tool. We wave and they smile, we know, all right, we'll see them again at the dance tonight. Hola, hola, to those black eyes, we promise to be true. We dance, we dance the whole night through. Down the rivage we float, we float the logs, she make it a ground a boat. On the logs we leap and laugh, it's safe upon the logs, is on the raft. Hola, 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 hola. It's a great song, Mr. Eddie, and it's a great voice, too. I'll never forget it, even while I'm away. Oh, that's right. You're quitting, Edgar, aren't you, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, well, before I quit, I promised Mr. Bergen I'd bring my new partner around to meet him, see? Oh, so you did. You mean the great Frederick? Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah. W- would you like to meet him, too, Mr. Eddie? Yes, I would. Oh, he's a swell guy. Really a swell guy. Oh, Fred! Yeah, what is it, little fella? Oh, Miss Reddy, this is the great Frederick. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Great Frederick. I don't blame you, brother. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a great guy. Informal, kind of, you know. Nice set of pipes you got there, brother Reddy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Say, uh, would you be interested in making personal appearances with us all over the country? Oh, well, no thanks. You see, I've got... Just thought you might like to knock off some important dough, brother. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I imagine it's high-class work. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, sure, sure, yes, yeah. We're only going to work at the most exclusive carnivals. <laughs> That's right. Don't suppose you've had any experience in minstrel shows or street parading, Brother Eddie? No, I haven't. That's oh, bad. It's too bad. Well. You don't play a saxophone or anything like that, do you? No, 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 I don't. <laughs> Guess he hasn't got much to offer, has he? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's too bad, yeah. Well, no harm in asking, eh, brother? Oh, no, but, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I know you're anxious to meet Edgar Bergen, and besides, I've got to practice my shag routine for the jitterbug contest at the businessmen's luncheon. <laughs> Good money in that stuff, brother. Yeah, I figured you'd know. Uh, oh, uh, Edgar? Yes, Nelson? Here's your surprise, Charlie's new partner. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, well, well. So, this is the great Frederick, huh? Yeah, uh uh-oh. This is the makings of a horrible friendship. (laughs) Well, how do you do, Mr. Frederick? Glad to see you, brother. Glad to see you. Press the flesh. Yeah. (laughs) Press the flesh. Ain't he swell, Bergen? Yes, he certainly is. Hope you don't feel like I'm cutting in on you, taking the kid away from you, brother. But I think I can do great things for the little fella. You think you can? You said it, brother. Yeah, brother. (laughs) He's everybody's brother. <laughs> That's what's so nice about him. So you're the great Bergen, huh? No, no, I'm just Bergen. But tell me, how did you get the name of the great Frederick? Go ahead, tell him, Fred. Go ahead. Well, my great-great-grandfather was the great Hartford. And my great-grandfather was the great Otto. And my grandfather was the great Manuel. Gee, that's great, isn't it? <laughs> Weren't any of them even mediocre? <laughs> no, it's a little fella. They were all great. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like. He's Frank. <laughs> yes, though Frank is not quite the word I'd use. Say, brother, your face looks familiar. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, I remember you now. You do? Sure, mm. sure. Remember we were standing in front of the Palace Theater and you put the B on us for bus fare to Scranton? I'm afraid I don't remember that. <laughs> I'm afraid you mean you don't want to remember that, huh? <laughs> Well, forget it, brother. I'll keep it scarce. Yes. Well, come to think of it, Mr. Frederick, I recall reading something about you in the trade papers only a couple of weeks ago. Well, it's awful hard to keep out of print, you know. (laughs) Yes, I know how you try, too. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, it was something about the audience, uh, how they booed you off the stage and you were canceled after the first show. Where was this? About six weeks ago in Chicago. That's a lie. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah, it was ten weeks ago in Oskaloosa. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did you feel about that Oskaloosa incident? Didn't make a bit of difference, not a bit of difference. <laughs> he never let success go to his head. Oh, listen, yeah. brother, listen. I've been idolized in Idaho and lionized in Little Falls. And, and... ostracized in Oskaloosa, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that little fella's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a lot of laughs. We certainly are. He's a great guy, Bergen. Really, he's a great guy. And a great ventriloquist, too. Oh, yeah. thanks, little fella. Thanks. I say, Bergen, how far can you throw your voice? Oh, I imagine about half a block. Half a block? I can sneeze further than that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you kill you, don't you, friend? <laughs> They tell Bergen about the time you threw your voice out in the alley and you forgot to let go of it. Oh, that was nothing, nothing at all. I'll show them how I work without moving my lips. Yeah, and pay attention to this, Bergen. You could use it. <laughs> you may not know this, brother, but I'm the only living ventriloquist who can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pipple peppers without moving my lips. Well, that's quite a stunt. Yeah, Bergen, step back for this one. Are you ready, Fred? I'm ready. Let him have it. Clear. <laughs> uh, clear the bell. Yeah. What did he say? I don't know. <laughs> That's remarkable. And ventriloquism ain't the only thing he does, Bergen. Yes, I know. He's a magician, a fire eater, and a notary public. By the way, brother, would you be interested in a used car? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Thought I'd ask, no harm in asking. Say, how about some snake oil for rheumatism? No, thanks. I don't have rheumatism. Oh, you don't have rheumatism, huh? Yeah. Well, brother, I sell hair tonic, too. <laughs> <laughs> Talk yourself out of that one, Bergen. <laughs> He's full of wise cranks. He's a great guy, really a great guy. Well, little fella, I'm going down to my room. Call up our booking agent. You want to come along? No, thanks. I got to stay here and say goodbye to the gang. And besides, I I got to make you know have a few words with Mr. Gable. Too. Okay. Well, so long, yeah. brother. Yeah. Yes. So long, and don't call me brother. Okay. Okay, brother. See you later, little fella. Yeah. And don't call me a little fella either. <laughs> say, Bergen, you should hear the act we whipped up for our uh, first date at Elkinsville. Yes. Well, really, Charlie. Do you still feel that this man holds the key to your future success? Yes, sir, Bergen, and you can't talk me out of this either. All right. No, sir, there's real money in this. I see. Folding money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> does a fella good, you know. It does him good to rough it a little, and the experience with the great Frederick will, well, it'll do me good. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sure he'll do you good. Yeah? Yes, and your experience will do you plenty good. Uh, I don't like the way you said that. I got a notion not to go just to spite you. Well, I'm afraid it's a little too late for that now, Charlie. Why? Well, because I've arranged to have another little boy take your place. You have? Yes. Who's the victim this time? A little boy from Iowa. You might remember him, Charlie. He worked with us in our last picture. Uh, you don't mean that... To... Yes. Oh, you couldn't. Uh, yes, I do. You mean Mortimer Snurd? That's right. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That fugitive from a butter churn? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes, Mortimer's a very loyal and a fine little chap. Ho, ho, ho. And he wants to work with me. And for nothing. For nothing. Do you get that, Charlie? I've been getting it for years. <laughs> Well, anyway, that's what Mortimer says. Yeah, talk is cheap, talk is cheap, yeah. So you're going to carry on with Mortimer, eh, Bergen? Yes, I am. Don't you think it'll be good? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Say, Mr. Bergen. Yes, Charlie? Is there an old people's home for unemployed ventriloquists? Don't worry about me, little feller. Okay, brother. Yeah. <laughs> The popular acceptance of Feeling Blue has long been an open sesame to modern songwriters. Among the hits written on this subject, we've had Melancholy Baby, Melancholy Mood, and the most recent addition is Melancholy Lullaby. Dorothy Lamour sings this newest one, which we consider a perfect way to enjoy the blues. <laughs> The 
Monday morning, all over the country, a change is being made. And here's what it is. It's the change to Chase & Sanborn dated coffee in the new silver package, and it's making Mondays brighter everywhere. People try it, they like it, they tell their friends about it, they keep coming back for more because it's finer coffee and it's freshly roasted. We've seen to that by building new modern roasting ovens all over the country from coast to coast. And from one of the ovens nearest your grocer, our fresh food special delivery service rushes him freshly roasted coffee at the height of its fine, rich flavor. Here in the East, grocers get a new supply of this superb blend every few days. And no package stays on the grocer's shelf more than 10 days. You can tell it's freshly roasted by the date plainly marked on the front of every silver package. The date is your assurance of first quality coffee, freshly roasted. From the moment this superb, delicious blend is roasted, it's handled rapidly, like the fresh food it is. It's packed at once in the dated silver packages and rushed out to grocers. On each trip, we leave just enough dated coffee to last until the next delivery. This delivery system and the date on every pound makes costly containers needless. Well, that means a substantial economy, and we pass the saving right along to you. Yes, the silver package saves you money. The date is your assurance of freshness. And the name Chase and Sanborn guarantees a superb blend. Try it. Buy Chase and Sanborn dated coffee in the new silver package tomorrow. An all-around good fellow and an all-around good actor is our special guest tonight. Clark Gable, for Clark is as popular as he is talented. Mr. Gable, whose home lot is Metro Goldwyn Mayer, will shortly be seen in the David O. Selznick epic production, Gone with the Wind. But this evening, Clark appears with Paula Winslow in an original comedy drama written by Robert Riley Crutcher. We present Clark Gable in Magnolias Have Thorns. <laughs> The 
scene, the lobby of a large hotel in New York. Roger Woods, a very worried-looking gentleman, rushes toward the desk. There is a reason for Mr. Woods' anxiety. He's a talent agent, a man whose business it is to sign up and manage entertainers. And right now, there's a very important signature he wants on one of his contracts. Front, telegram, 305. Hey, Willie. Oh, hello, Mr. Woods. Anything registered here from New Orleans? Why, uh, why, yes, uh, a beautiful girl who That's just... the one. What's her room number? Well, let me see, uh... Uh, Linda and Jackson, Suite 12. Hey, wait a minute, you can't go up there. If I don't, I'm out of a job. Yeah, but look, Mr. Listen, Woods. Willie, my agency wants this kid under contract. They can book her into the World's Fair, a personal appearance tour, maybe even sell her to the movies. Yeah, who is she? The new swimming champ. Just broke the record. Fastest in the world. I didn't know Southern girls were such fast swimmers. Now, look, here's ten bucks. My last. If any other agents come buzzing around here, tell them they're in the wrong hive. But, Mr. Woods, And look... don't spend it until I get back. I want to borrow it. <laughs> Linda Ann Jackson. Well... The scent of sweet magnolia blossoms. I'm afraid... How welcome you are to this squalid metropolis, this temple of steel and rivets, like a breath of fresh air. You paint visions of azaleas and sweet potato vines, camellia buds, and lacy Spanish moss drooping down upon the... Uh, the, uh, drooping down. Who are you? Uh, Roger Woods, from the greatest talent agency in the world. Miss Jackson, I am here to protect your interests. You... Protect you from our competitors. Protect you from being cheated. Yes, cheated by unscrupulous carpetbaggers. Great day in the morning. Young lady, you may not know it, but you've made quite a name for yourself. The champion. Think of it. The fastest swimmer... Diver. Huh? I'm a diver. The fastest diver in the world. My agency can sell a name like that. We can get you. Now, don't faint, child. Two hundred dollars a week. Two hundred? Well, I just talked with another agency. They said they'd get me three hundred. Oh, they did? Well, naturally, they're crooks. For offering me more money? Don't you see? That would mean a bigger commission for them. They're only thinking of themselves. Now, now, here's the contract. And a pen. No fuss, no worry. All you have to do is sign. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Woods, but I'm afraid I can't sign. That's perfectly all right. Just make an X here at the bottom. <laughs> well, I declare, you Yankees talk so fast, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I reckon I'll better get myself a ticket and take the very next train back to New Orleans. Well, why, you don't realize the big plans we have for you. Maybe even Hollywood. You'd like Hollywood. Fabulous country. Fabulous. Everybody's famous and everybody's rich. You never saw so many dark glasses and so few tin cups. <laughs> and wait till you see those dressing rooms. Bungalows on wheels. Now, what would I want to ride around in a bungalow for? Fun, fun. Scoot up and down Vine Street, leering out the window. <laughs> Here, here, sign right here. And... Now, I'm not going to sign anything. You people up here in New York will take advantage of poor little me. I'm going right down and take the next train home. Hey, you can't do that. I'd lose my... I'd, uh... No, forgive me. I, I didn't mean that. I... Well, I'm not thinking of myself. Uh, not at a time like this. I... I was just thinking how fortunate I am to meet a sweet, simple, unaffected child like you. A woman who needs to be looked after, not just watched. Until now, I've had such unhappy experiences with women, gold diggers. Oh, you poor man. Linda. Yes? Perhaps I haven't the right to say it, and you may not forgive me. But if you leave New York like this, I shall feel a strange emptiness. In your stomach? Uh, I was speaking of my heart. Uh, uh, my heart. <laughs> you think I want to trick you into signing. Now, you're wrong, and I'll prove it. I'll tear up the contract. There. Now, that wasn't the contract you showed me. Oh, oh, wasn't it? Oh, well, no matter. It's the idea, the symbol that counts. <laughs> Won't you let me have this last evening with you? It means so much to me. We'll go somewhere and dance. Would you like that? The cloud room. Uh, well, Isn't uh, that that high place? <clears throat> uh, very. Uh, especially on Saturday night. I, I was thinking of a little drugstore I know with the most marvelous cuisine and floor show. I'd like the cloud room. Uh, oh, no, no, you wouldn't. The place is always so crowded. Riff-raff, smoky and dark, practically a dive. We don't want that on our last evening, do we? Uh-huh. I'd like the cloud room and all sorts of expensive things to eat. Uh-huh. <laughs> Honey, are you sure you've never been to New York before? <laughs> Would you care to order now? Yes, we'll have... Caviar. Uh, <clears throat> uh, domestic. Yes, domestic vulgar Romanov. Very good, madame. Good. 
She's a darn sight better than I thought. Oh, just imagine. Little old me sitting up on top of the world like this, ordering anything my heart desires. What are you going to have? An ashtray. I'll just sit here and burn. Pity you're leaving tomorrow. Uh-huh. I, uh... Well, I just thought you might have reconsidered the, about the contract. Well, I should say not. No? Have some more caviar. All right, I will. Oh, my, you're so sweet to me. I, I could just eat you up. Yeah, yes. Well, I'm about the only thing you've missed. Ah... <laughs> uh, it's a romantic night. Linda. Yes? Come over here. No, stand over here. At the edge. Look down over the city. The vast panoramic spectacle of light. Linda, what do you see? Guna Guna at the Rialto. <laughs> no. No, Linda. Millions and millions of tiny blinking lights. Forget for a moment they are the prosaic conveniences of those little people below. Let the mood of the moment, the mood of the magic scene beneath steal over you like the sweet remembrance of an old romance. Ah, oh, it reminds me of New Orleans. The gentle breeze that kisses your lips. No, the fish from the ocean. <laughs> the fish from the... Maybe I'm out of practice. I never was good, but I didn't think I was that bad. You know, those lights are kind of romantic. You, do you re... No, no, you don't catch me on that one again. The pink ones and the blue mm, ones. And the fish. Oh, oh my. When you look down, doesn't it make you want to jump? No, mostly push. Oh, <laughs> now, Mr. Woods, I think you're having fun with me. The irony of it, the irony of it. You see before me, you were a failure. Even my ego hisses me as it deflates. Maybe we'd better dance. Oh, I'd just love to. What kind? The way I feel, something reckless, a dashing minuet. Mr. Wood, you're limping. Yes, don't give it another thought. Oh, Ma, I just love jitterbugging. And you know, you're real good at it, too. Self-defense. Oh, well, now, you've probably been thrown off of better floors. Off of, yes, but not down on. Uh, here's our table. Well, uh, maybe you'd better take me back to the hotel now. Oh, no, 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 not yet. You see, I I'm not used to this kind of nightlife. Down home, the boys take me home early. Mm, I know exactly how they feel. They're worn out. And besides, I, I have to catch that train in the morning. You, you mean you're still determined to... After all I told you? Now, perhaps I wasn't clear enough. Darling... Yes? You're... You're so... Yes? Uh, well, when... When I'm with you, I... Uh, yes? There's no use. I haven't the strength. Goodbye. Oh, no. No, don't go. Tell me some more love talk. I have laryngitis. Oh, my. What a shame. Just when I was thinking you're the nicest man. Just when I was thinking maybe I ought to sign that contract. Uh, what? You mean you're... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here it is. Here it is. Pen. Pen. Where's a pen? Here. Uh, there you are. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me get in my pocket. You don't know how I work for that. Now, you better go home and get some sleep. First thing in the morning, I'll have photographers over to get shots of you swimming. Swimming? Yes, you aren't afraid of the water. Why, well, yes, I am. <laughs> That's good. And don't forget to pin your medals on. What medals? Well, how do you use your head? The medals for swimming. But I can't swim. <laughs> you can't swim? You can't swim? Why, no. Whoever told you that I could swim? Well, you did. You said... You said... Say, can't you even float? Well, I'm, I'm pretty good at the hop, skip, and jump. Well, I'm going to be pretty good at it myself if you're on the level. Mr. Woods, I'm afraid you've signed yourself a landlubber. Yeah. See, I'd have sworn you had... Hey. Hey, just a moment. Just a moment. What became of Dixie? What became of the deep self? Well, it's perfectly <laughs> simple. Just look at the signature on the contract. Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Scott, you're... An agent, just like yourself. I put Linda Jackson under contract before you arrived. I was waiting in her room while she deposited some money. Yes, I know. I ran into her in the lobby. 
You... But while you were dressing, I had another contract drawn up. This one, in which you signed her over to me. Why, you... Here, give uh, me that. Let sorry, me... but what could I do? I was in danger of losing my job. Oh, and now I'll lose mine. Well, it's not so bad for a woman. You see, I need mine. I'm going to be married. Oh, you are? Well, I wasn't when I came up here. But I declare, honey, if I can talk myself into it, I can certainly talk you. This is Nelson Eddy, and the chase in Sanborn Hour continues with a jaunty piece of Gilbert and Sullivan Jabberwocky. My name is John Wellington Wells. Oh, really? I always thought it was Nelson Eddy. Uh, so did I, Dorothy, but with Gilbert and Sullivan's song to back me up, I am John Wellington Wells, and I tell all about my sorcery. Your whatery? My sorcery. I'm a sorcerer. What's a sorcerer? A companion to a cup? No, my dear. A sorcerer is a man who goes around and puts little girls who ask too many questions under a magic spell, turns them into stardust, and presto changeo, they can't ask any more questions. You wouldn't mean that as a hint, would you? Wouldn't I? I guess you would. <laughs> All right, John Nelson Wellington Wells Eddy, sing you, sorcerer. <laughs> My name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, and never fill purses in prophecies, which it nails. If you want a proud foe to make tracks, if you'd melt a rich uncle in wax, you've got to look in on the resident gin number 70, Simmery X. We've a first-rate assortment of magic, and for raising a posthumous shade, with effects that are comic or tragic, there's no cheaper house in the trade. Love filter with quantities of it, and for knowledge, if anyone burns, we're keeping a very small profit, a profit who brings us unbounded returns. For he can prophesy with a wink of his eye Peep with security into futurity Sum up your history, clear up a mystery Humor, proclivity, for a nativity, for a nativity He has answers oracular, bogey spectacular Tetrapods tragical, mirrors so magical Facts astronomical, solemn or comical And if you want it, he makes a reduction On taking a quantity Oh, if anyone anything lacks He'll find it already in stacks if he'll only look in on the resident gin number 70 simoliacs. He can raise you hosts of ghosts and that without reflectors and creepy things with wings and gaunt and grisly specters. He can fill you crowds of shrouds and horrify you vastly. He can rack your brains with chains and gibberings grim and ghastly. Then if you plan it, he changes organity with an urbanity full of satanity, vexes humanity with an inanity fatal to vanity, driving your foes to the verge of insanity. Barring tautology, Indian analogy, electrobiology, mystic nosology, spirit philology, high class astrology, such as a knowledge, he isn't the man to require an apology. Oh! My name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, and ever fill purses and prophets and witches and knells. And if anyone anything lacks, he'll find it already in stacks. If he'll only look in on the resident in number 70, Samaria. Oh! Ordinarily, we wouldn't welcome an attack of brainstorm, but this evening we're more than happy to. A particularly severe storm in the person of that noted lecturer and club woman, the astute and astigmatic Vera Vig. Uh, good evening, Miss Vig. How are you? Oh. Betty, I'm so glad to see you again. I've been listening to you and all the beautiful music on this program, and it's really breathtaking. <laughs> oh, you know, I just love to watch you stand up there singing. It's so timely. Uh, so timely? Yes. Uh, the way you Adam's apple bobs up and down reminds me of Halloween. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, please, please, Miss Fagg. Now, as, as I remember it, you were planning to discuss music, not Adam's apples. Oh, yes, yes, music. Oh, music, I, I love it all, every bit of it. From opera to spirituals, from jazz to hymns, I just run the whole gamut. Oh, well, I see. Well, now, as, as a music lover, what is your favorite hymn? My favorite hymn? Mm. Oh, Clark Gable! Oh. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> You're right here, Miss Vague. Now, yes. just take it slow and easy. Yes. Music, remember? Oh, yes, music. Thank you. Uh, uh, of all the forms of musical endeavor, I think I prefer opera, don't you, Mr. Eddy? There, there's something about the opera. I don't know. It's so, uh, it's so uh, operatic. Um, <laughs> uh, who was it that wrote that, that beautiful thing, that uh, uh, sympathy and be minor, that... Opus business. Well, that opus business. Miss yeah. <clears throat> Fegg, uh, do you know anything at all about music? Well, certainly I do, young man. What would you like to know? Well, for instance, suppose you tell me the motive of my last number. The what? The motive. What was the motive in the last song I sang? The motive? Mm. Well, I'm not sure, but it sounded like revenge. <laughs> I, I am well acquainted with music. I, I believe I told you that I studied opera myself. Oh, yes? Where? Uh, well, I studied in Italy. I used to sing with a small quartet. There were just two of us. <laughs> that was uh, way back in 1887. See, how much would that make me? 1915. Uh, my singing studio was just a stone's throw from the public square. But I had it moved out of range. <laughs> I'd be glad to give you a few pointers that I picked up in Italy, Mr. Eddie. Uh, I wonder if you'd mind running up and down the scale for me. Oh, now, Miss Vague, I... Oh, now, I... come on, come on. Don't be bashful. Well, Go all ahead. right. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. What was that? What? <laughs> I was just loosening up a little bit. Oh, I'm glad you told me. I thought you were falling apart. <laughs> to learn in the singing business. Oh, did I hear you say that you were a singer, Miss Vague? Uh, <laughs> you girls know each other, I take it, Miss Lamour, Miss Vague. Oh, how do you do? Yes, uh, I am a singer, Miss Lamour. In fact, my whole family has musical talent. My cousin, for instance, was an excellent harpoonist. <laughs> <laughs> They're very hard to play, those, uh, harpoons. Uh, uh, yes, yes, they are. And, uh, I myself sang opera right here in the Hollywood Bowl just two years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. What was the aria? I think about 200,000 square feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I see what you mean. Yes, well, anyway, I, I sang that, uh, that beautiful intermezzo cantato. You know, the one with the lovely lyrics. I, I remember there was one particular line that went, uh, Give the lifted face that feels the warmth of the sun. Oh, lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Give the lifted face that feels the warmth of the sun. Oh, of course, it's only natural that the face would be a little tender right after it'd been lifted. <laughs> well, Miss Vague, I'd like to hear you sing now, if you would. Uh, well, I'd be glad to. In fact, I was practicing back there in my dressing room. I, I wonder if you heard me. Oh, was that it? I thought you were caught in the door. Uh, bless your heart. Um, uh, well, let's see, what shall I sing? I'll sing something simple, shall I? Something like Home Sweet Home. Yes, do sing that. Uh, well, now, let's not do anything hasty here. Uh, oh, I sing it very slowly. <laughs> Do you care for the orchestra? Uh, well, not all of them, but I could go for that violinist with the tricky mustache. <laughs> uh, here I go now, let's say. Uh, home sweet home. <laughs> there's no, no, there's no, no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no... No, 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 no. Please, Miss Fagg, please. Well, what's the matter? I'm sorry, but that was awful. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I have an awful home. <laughs> You're fooling, Mr. Eddie. I, I really have a beautiful home, and I want both you and Mr. Moore to come over next Tuesday evening, and I'll really sing for you. Well, uh, that's <laughs> awfully nice, of, of course, but I, well, uh, we, uh, that is, Dottie and I are going to see Tristan and Isolde that night. Well, lovely. Bring them along with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. No one but a most ambitious songwriter can ever figure out where the next inspiration for the newest love song may come from. Who would have thought that the old nursery rhyme, Three Blind Mice, would prove such inspiration? They've gone from three blind mice to two blind loves. As cute a musical trick as ever was turned. Sung by Dorothy L'Amour. As cute a trick as ever sang it. Blind love, two blind love. Do we know what we're doing? Two blind love. Don't know what month it is or the time of day. Don't know if we're in Brooklyn or in Mandalay. I only know the sun started to shine the day that I looked into your eyes and you looked into mine. Two blind love, babes in the woods. We've got it oh so bad, but isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true, but heaven is in view for two blind love. Folks say we'll never find it, what we're out to find. They say the road is bumpy and that love is blind. Could be, could be something in what they say, but we're on our way. Every little while we hear about new scientific methods for testing things we use in daily life. But nobody has improved upon grandmother's pudding test when it comes to things to eat. That's right, Nelson. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And that's why so many people are changing to Chase and Sanborn dated coffee in the new silver package. They try it, they like it, they talk about it, and so the good word spreads. Everybody's talking about this finer coffee, freshly roasted. You get it fresh because we've built roasting plants all over the United States. Our fresh food special delivery system supplies your grocer with this superb blend from one of the roasting ovens nearest to his store. The coffee reaches him at the height of its fine flavor, freshly roasted. And as added assurance that you get this wonderful coffee really fresh, every package is dated. No pound remains in your grocer's store more than 10 days. In fact, every few days our fast trucks deliver just enough dated coffee to last until the next trip. This system operates like clockwork. As soon as this fine coffee is roasted to the peak of its flavor, it's quickly packed in dated silver packages. And then it's handled rapidly, as fine fresh food should be. The speed of our delivery system, plus the date on the package, makes costly containers unnecessary. So we use the economical new silver package instead, and the saving is passed right along to you. 
and you get superb, freshly roasted coffee at a very reasonable price. Try it. Be sure to buy a pound from your grocer tomorrow. Mr. Gable. Hello, Jolly. Well, goodbye, Mr. Gable. <laughs> well, that's a pretty fast entrance and exit, Jolly. Where are you bound for? Well, you see, I'm uh, I'm going out on the road and I'm I'm going into business for myself, sort of. I'm going to quit Hollywood for a while. But what's going to become of all your girlfriends? No. Oh, well. You know, Hollywood is uh, well, it's settling down, Mr. Gable. Haven't you noticed that, sort of? Well, yes, I have noticed it. Yes, losing its sparkle, I don't know. Yeah, they're all getting hitched now. See, all my old friends, the old flames are snuffed out, you know. There's Andrea Leach and Barbara Stanwyck and Annabella. Gee, I don't know. I just feel like I'm sort of, you know, kind of around and away here now, just... uh, Oh, well, that's very, very sad, Charlie. Yeah, but the one I missed most of all is Carol Lombard's yeah. name. Carol Lombard? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you liked Carol. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure, sure. But she was a great girl. A great girl. A little dizzy, but a nice... <laughs> a very nice kid. Yes, so I've been told. Yeah. Now, I resent that attitude you took there. Well, well... She's married now, you know. Well, I heard uh, something to that effect, yes. Yes, yes, she is, yes. Definitely, yes. yes. Well, uh, she was going to wait for me, too, you know. Yes, but she married, I don't know, some chump, I don't know. (laughs) She did? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's strictly on the rebound, you understand. (laughs) I think she married him just to spite me, too. Girls will do that, you know. Charlie. Huh? Listen, no, leave me alone, Bergen. Listen. Well, uh, don't nudge me. Don't. Well, Charlie, mm-hmm. uh, just how long have you known Carol Lombard? Oh, I met her about uh, about three years ago. Come this what may, uh, <laughs> it was it was in India, I think. Yes, yes, I was riding home wounded from uh, pig sticking. Uh, wounded from a pig sticking. Yes, of course I got stuck by mistake. You understand. <laughs> Uh, a javelin caught me just south of Bombay. Oh, how awful. Yeah. Beastly place, Bombay. Yes, it is, yes. Well, it was there that Carol and me vowed that no one would ever come between us. Uh, but she broke her promise, eh, Charlie? Yeah, yes, she did. Yeah. How fickle. Yeah. I can't understand it. Well, I guess you don't know her as well as I do. <laughs> no, no, and I guess you don't know who she's married to, do you? No, I don't, but what's the difference? Uh, she's married, so she's married. What's the difference, Charlie? I don't... Charlie, now, now please, Bergen, I've asked you. Now, listen. Now, cut it out. <laughs> Will you please listen? Now, stop nudging me. Oh. <laughs> don't nudge me. Say, uh, Charlie. Yeah? I've heard that the man she married doesn't amount to much. You're right there, Mr. Gable. You're right. Yeah, Charlie. Now, don't interrupt me now. <laughs> you hear the... Listen. No, come. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, say, uh, Charlie... Uh, where did Miss Lombard find this character? Oh, I don't know. She turned up a loose rock and there he was. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, that's very interesting. Yes, uh, yes. So just a hobo, huh? Yeah, you might say that, yeah. And I think you'd be flattering him, too. Tell me, have you heard about him? Uh, well, uh, at this point, I'd hesitate to admit anything. <laughs> I don't blame you for denying it, yeah. Yeah, they tell me the guy's a farmer. That's where he makes most of his money. Oh, Oh, really? Yeah. I heard he was an actor. Yeah, well, there's room for argument there. (laughs) Oh, no. He's a holdover from lantern slides. (laughs) I wouldn't, Charlie. Will you please listen to me? No, I won't. Now, stop it, Bergen. Now, you bother me. Listen. And don't nudge me, but if you'll only listen. I've, I've asked you a dozen times. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, That's right, Bergen. Don't interrupt us. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and I are discussing the yokel that Lombard married. Yes, I realize that only too well. Yeah. 
And I'd like to say, Charlie, that if you can't speak well of people, you shouldn't say anything. What are you trying to get at? Yes. Can't, can't we help it if the guy's a chump? Eh, Gabo? <laughs> well, I can't. No. Oh, hey. <laughs> Mr. Gabo, did you ever see the guy? Uh, not close up, no. Well, you should. You should just for laughs, you should. <laughs> Yes, I imagine I should. He yeah. must be very funny. Yes, yeah. Of course, I don't know. He he may be really a nice fellow when you get to know him, you know? Oh, you're just prejudiced. Yeah, I guess you're right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he knows from nothing. He's a San Fernando dirt farmer, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know how they farm out there, don't you? <laughs> Alfalfa Al, the gentleman farmer, they call him. Oh, a gentleman farmer. Yeah, yeah. You mean one of those fellows who takes his hat off when he gets in a grain elevator? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a guy. <laughs> Poor girl. See, what do you say we get some popcorn and a gallon of cider and go out and cheer her up, huh? Yes, yes, I'm in favor of that. Say, uh, what uh, other dirt do you know about this fellow, Charlie? Well, I wouldn't want this to get around, but confidentially, I've heard Charlie. Listen. Now, Will Berger, will you please stop? <laughs> I have heard confident Charlie. Now, listen, Berger, and that black and blue spot is worn out. <laughs> Don't nudge me. That's all I ask. All right. I just want to tell you something. That's all. Yeah, well, all right. Go ahead. All right. I'll, I'll whisper it to you. I'll whisper, whisper. You and your high school secrets. <laughs> Say it and go away. All right. I'll tell you then. Well, go ahead. Yes. I just wanted you to know that Carol Lombard's husband... Yes? ...is Clark Gable. All right. So what? The bo- uh... <laughs> Who? Clark Gable. You mean... Uh... Yes, I do. But, well, Bergen, why didn't you nudge me? Well, I tried... <laughs> I tried to tell you. Yeah, sure, sure. You didn't even, even know enough to keep my mouth shut. All right. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Gale, I did. If you were... I, 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 <laughs> That's all right, Charlie. Yeah. I led you on. And just to prove that we're good friends, we'll still get that cider and go out to the ranch after the show. Will we? Sure, sure. Yeah. And I'll show you around the place. I want uh, you to see my horses. Gee, that'll be swell. Yes, yeah. yes. And I'll show you my guns, oh, too. Oh, gee, your guns. Oh, your guns. Oh, <laughs> oh you're still mad at me, huh? <laughs> No, no, no. I mean my skeet guns. Oh. Uh, do you like uh, skeet shooting, Charlie? Yeah, yes, yes, I do. Uh, uh, yes, I guess, yes. Uh, uh, wild skeets, you mean? Uh. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, wild ones. Oh, sure. Yes, yes, they're in season now. Oh, good, good. Did you ever shoot any? Uh, the, uh, skeets. Uh. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, indeed, yes, yes. Yes, I remember once I shot a mama skeet and uh, two baby skeeters. One shot. <laughs> Say, um, come to think of it, Charlie, uh, I could use a bright boy like you out on my farm. Could you? Yes, yes, I could. In my cornfield. What would I be? The, the head hidey whore? <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. But you'd make a swell stand-in for my scarecrow. Yeah, wow, well, that does it. I knew the guy was still mad at me. <laughs> The 18th century opera, Xerxes, introduced a very impressive aria entitled Ombra Mai Fu. But to the world at large, it's become familiarly known as Handel's Largo. Under either name, its music is equally beautiful. Oh, 
noche. blows his whistle, marking the end of another 60 minutes of play, until our teams once again take the field next week for good old you of CNS. In the meanwhile, we will probably all be looking at form sheets and trying to select candidates for the All-American teams. It's quite possible that we may disagree on our individual selections, but after it's over, we'll all be in agreement on one All-American selection, and that is a steaming cup of Chase and Sanborn coffee for brisk autumn days and nights. And it's good to know that you are with us on that selection, too. We'll all be back next week. Dorothy L'Amour, Robert Armbruster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, Edgar Bergen, and uh, Mortimer Snurd. And despite all threats, somehow I have a hunch that somewhere lurking nearby will be Charlie McCarthy. Our special guests will be Jackie Cooper and Cliff Nazaro. So until next Sunday, this is Nelson Eddy, looking forward...
Next week, another big chase in Sanborn Hour. Jackie Cooper, Nelson Eddy, Edgar Bergen, Mortimer Snurd, Charlie McCarthy, Dorothy Lamour, Cliff Nazaro, and Robert Armbruster in the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra. Heard on this program were Two Blind Loves from the Marx Brothers at the Circus and The Big Show by Jerome Kern. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee. This is the National Broadcasting Company.